Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Doodling Through Education. Today we are going to spend some time talking about aquatic biomes. I'm really excited for this episode because I think it's fun. I love science and exploring and learning all about God's creation. But the first thing we need to do is talk about what is a biome? So without further ado, let's jump right in. So what is a biome? Biomes are geographical areas on Earth with similar climates and conditions with similar living organisms. Some examples of biomes are grassland, forest, which can include tropical rainforests, deciduous forests with trees that change through the seasons, and coniferous forests. And then there's desert and tundra. And the biome that we're going to be talking about today, which are aquatic biomes. Now, we can divide some biomes even further down into different categories, and that's what we're going to do today. The aquatic biome includes both freshwater and saltwater, or marine, biomes. So let's start by discussing the freshwater side of the aquatic biome. The first freshwater aquatic biome is ponds and lakes. This is referred to as a lentil ecosystem, which just simply means that they are standing or still waters. Many ponds are often seasonal, which only last a few months out of the year, where lakes could have been present for a hundred years or more. There are several zones within ponds and lakes that are often determined by the distance from the shore and the depth. The first zone is called the littoral zone. This zone is closest to the shore, which makes it the shallowest and warmest. Many animals live in this zone, like fish, snails, clams, various insects, and amphibians. There are several different types of algae and other plants that live in this area as well. Oftentimes, the animals that live here end up being food for other animals, like waterfowl, which are birds, fish, turtles, and frogs. The next zone is called the limnetic zone. This zone is close to the surface, in the middle of the body of water, surrounded by the littoral zone, which we just talked about. This zone is often very bright and is occupied by fish as well as plankton. It is often bright because it is the first zone and is closest to the sun. The next zone is the profundal zone. This is a deeper, darker zone that the dead and decaying matter fall down to. Due to this, the organisms that live here are often detritivores, which are just organisms that feed on dead and decaying material. Let's move on to our next freshwater aquatic biome that we're going to talk about today, and this is streams and rivers. These differ from our last freshwater aquatic biome in that these waters are moving and flowing in one direction. The characteristics of rivers change throughout the length of it. Close to the source of the river, which is where it comes from, it is often colder. This is due to oftentimes the source of a river being runoff from snowpack or from a glacier. This water is also highly oxygenated, making it a great place for trout and other freshwater fish. As the river travels, it becomes wider and warmer and the biodiversity, which just means the amounts of different types of living things, 
increases. Many animals and aquatic plants live in this area. As the water reaches the mouth of the river, where it empties into a major ocean, it becomes murky due to the sediment that is carried from farther up the river or stream. This decreases the amount of light that is able to travel through the water, and in doing so, this causes the biodiversity to decrease. Fish that require less oxygen are often found here, like catfish and carp. The food chain in rivers and streams go oftentimes like this. Microscopic organisms, then insects, which eat the microscopic organisms, and then fish, which eat the insects, and then birds and other animals that live near the river or stream, which feed on the fish. It's important to note that rivers change over time due to the sediment that is brought downstream. They meander through the landscape and change the speed in which they flow due to these things. The last freshwater aquatic biome, but not the last aquatic biome, just the last freshwater aquatic biome, are wetlands and estuaries. A wetland is an area of land that is saturated or by the water. So it's either saturated with water or it is by the water. Most of the time, this is due to water seeping up from a spring or aquifer. Wetlands can also be near a lake or river. This is an area that is not fully dry land and is not fully underwater. Due to this, the plants that live around it have adapted to life there. They are called hydrophytes. Wetlands can be found in many different climates and in fact are found on every continent except Antarctica. Wetlands can be found in forested areas and can also be found in areas without trees on a grassland. Now, estuaries are different because they are transitional lands from land to sea and from salt water to fresh water. This is often where rivers meet seas and because of this, these areas are under the influence of the tide. So animals and plants are well adapted to these condi conditions of transitional waters and lands. Examples of some animals that live in these areas include marine worms, shorebirds, clams, reptiles, crabs, lobsters, and marine mammals. Now we get to our last aquatic biome for the day, and these are oceans and seas. This is the largest and most expansive biome in the world. These are different than the other aquatic biomes that we have talked about today in the fact that they are not a freshwater aquatic biome, but they are a saltwater aquatic biome instead. This plays a major role in deciding what flora and fauna live in the area. Oceans are divided into four zones depending on the depth of the water, similar to how lakes are divided. The first zone of the ocean is the intertidal zone. This is where the ocean meets the land. Some examples of organisms that live here are sea stars, mollusks, crabs, and algae. The next zone is the pelagic zone. This is found in the open seas. Some examples of organisms that live here are whales, dolphins, and sharks. Next is the benthic zone where seaweed, bacteria, fungi, and a wide variety of sponges live. And last is the abyssal zone, which is the deepest part of the ocean. Due to this, not a lot of biodiversity is found here. Mainly bacteria and invertebrates live down here and feed on decomposing things that have dropped from higher zones. And those are the four different types of aquatic biomes. 
thank you again for tuning in to another episode of Doodling Through Education. I hope you enjoyed learning about the different characteristics of these regions, as well as the animals and plants that live there. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the new episode every week on history and science. As always, be, be good, be kind, follow God's will, and take care. Bye.